in ancient Greece, the Greeks were very powerful. They had many battles that they fought. And one of those got them stuck, saw them laying siege at the city of Troy, and they couldn't get in. Troy and the Trojans were so powerful and so strong that the Greeks couldn't get in. And so what did they do? They built a horse, a big horse, who could hide men inside it, and pretend that that horse was a sign of peace. They left it outside, and the Trojans, thinking that the Greeks are leaving, so they left this sign of peace behind, they let the horse inside their walls. You can imagine what happened as night comes, all the Trojans go to sleep, and the sneaky Greeks come out of the horse and take over the city because they can kill everyone there without even engaging in the battle because they weren't expecting anything there. They didn't know they were in need. They didn't know there was a danger right within their city, their own city. So where I'm going with this, I think at times we do not realize that there is a danger in front of us. At times we do not realize that we are in need. People pray when they are in need. You know, maybe you have somebody who is struggling with something. Maybe it's health-related, it's job-related, or it's um, just a relationship that is not working. You pray for that. And because it's so hard and dear to you, you pray even more. You recognize you are in need. The thing is that we do not realize that we are always in need. We think we all need something at a specific time, but Jesus in the gospel is saying, telling a parable to them so that they can realize the necessity of praying always without becoming weary. It's a necessity to pray always because we are always in need. The widow knows well. If you are a widow back then, you don't have a man who defends you. You don't have anybody in your family that is going to stand up next to you and say, give her justice. So she's the one that knows very well she's in need. And she keeps going back to the judge. Give justice to me. Give justice to me. Give justice to me. Moses, on the other side, we heard in the first reading, knew very well what was happening. He knew that prayer was important because he saw the Israelites in need. As he's praying, he's lifting up his hands and arms. Israelites won. As he becomes weary, cannot hold his hands anymore, the Israelites lose the battle. But he's smart enough to know and realize that there is a need. There is a need for that prayer. There is a need for his intercession so that the battle is won. We're always in need and we don't realize there is a battle. There is a battle outside ourselves and that sometimes there is a battle inside ourselves. We don't realize that like maybe the Trojans, we have these big oars, these big enemies who are trying to attack us constantly, over and over again. And you see it all the time. And then maybe you get up and say, I pray today. I said my Hail Mary today. I'm ready to go. It's like I'm signing up for a marathon today. Like, are you training? Have you been training? Oh, yes, I walk the dog every morning in the neighborhood. That doesn't make sense. But why do we pretend then with our spiritual life, with what is out there, to go into the world with just the bare minimum? Maybe with just one Hail Mary, one Our Father, one Glory Be. Sometimes, you know, we don't realize that like that horse, it's inside us. That we need to fight things that are within ourselves. That I can be, unfortunately, my worst enemy, because 
I don't want to hope that big. I don't want to dream that big. I'm afraid that I will be burned. I'm afraid that things will not happen. And so I don't realize that I am in need. You know how sometimes, I don't know if you ever tried to keep a ball under the water. No, you really need to use strength and you need to maybe use both hands to keep the ball under the water. Because it's enough that you move a little bit of a balance, you're not strong enough, and the ball wants to come up. Sometimes we experience that we are pulled outside and we are kept on such a shallow way of life, while the Lord wants to keep us deep. Wants to keep us deep so we don't let things in life just pass without having any meaning. We don't let things in life pass without us saying, that was a grace. I should follow it. That's an invitation for me to step up. That's an invitation for me to change. There's a necessity to pray always without becoming weary. Maybe we can start like where Moses started. You know, recognizing that prayer does change things. I've seen it done over and over again. We are in need, we're all in need of one thing or another. But maybe we need a friend or two that come with us and hold our hands and arms up. Maybe in your life right now you can think of one or two friends. Maybe your spouse. Maybe your brothers or sisters, maybe you have some good friends at school who can tell you and can hold you accountable for the prayer that you are called to have. Why don't we get together and pray? Or shoot them text and say, anything I can pray for today? How are you doing? You know, you let each other into each other's life so that you can hold each other accountable and you can lift each other up to the Lord. And things will not start changing if we don't make a plan. Maybe it needs to be simple. Maybe it needs to be something that we can afford and we can start doing. Yes, a Hail Mary will not change and give you too much strength if you think of going into battle just with a Hail Mary. But if right now God is not even present in your life except for Sunday at Mass, Maybe the Hail Mary every morning, it's the next possible step you can take. And maybe it doesn't become only praying in the morning, maybe it becomes also praying in the evening before you go to bed. And maybe it's just a reminder that you put on your phone or with your friends and say, before I do something important, I want to pray for wisdom. Before I step into important discussion and conversation and relationship, I want to step for extra, I want to pray for extra love extra care, extra, extra compassion and patience. Beginning a new walk frightens us. But after every step we take, we realize how dangerous it was if we stay where we were. Beginning a new walk frightens us. Yes, it does. We don't know where we, we're going to go. But after you take a step, and another step, and another step, you realize the goodness. And you realize how dangerous it would have been to stay where you were. I think if we just change our mentality and we realize we are in need. Maybe it's something that is going on within myself. Maybe it's something that is going on outside myself and the pressure I receive and the threats I receive. But start praying. It's a necessity, Jesus says. And not just praying every once in a while, but praying always. And not just praying always whatever, but without becoming weary. Hoping that the Lord, sooner or later, He will come to your aid. Knowing that the Lord is faithful. And he will answer your call.